Hello, colleagues. My name is Claudia Abar, and I am a kindergarten teacher in District 4. I am also one of your virtual content specialists for kindergarten math. For today's video, we wanted to highlight some of the slides that we use throughout our lessons. You will find all of the lessons on Teach Hub. The dark gray slides are all meant for your eyes only, and the light blue, the light color slides are all for your students. For today, we want to go ahead and highlight the summarization slide. You will find this in slide F. And I know if you're anything like me at the end of a lesson, what you really want to do is just hurry up and wrap it up. You know, you might be losing your students focus. They might not be as engaged. But we want to share with you some of the tips on using this slide and some of the reasons why we think it is important to do so. Why do we summarize? We summarize really to get a sense of whether our students are able to share what they understood from the lesson, if they are able to consolidate their ideas, and in doing so, listen to the ideas of their friends. This is important because it gives us a better sense of whether they understood the work or not. One slide that gives you additional guidance on this can be found here, guidance for assessment during instruction. The summary slide is meant as a way of assessing your students' knowledge for that lesson. It is a formative assessment and you can use it as such, especially if you're working remotely. You, you are able to ask your students, can they represent teen numbers on a number rack? Can they represent the teen number on a number rack and in a number bond? Can they make connections between the two representations? This can all be achieved with this one slide. What is the same about the number racks and the number bonds? Now, as a teacher, only you know what answers you consider to be acceptable from the end of the lesson. You are free to ask any questions other than this one that you feel would yield the same results. But we wanted to highlight that as we go into more of the same remote le learning instruction, this is a really good way of assessing whether your students are able to master the work or whether additional practice is required. One slide that provides additional practice, it's usually following the summarization slide. Not always. Sometimes we encourage you to create your own slides based on what it is that you feel your students might need. But this is a really good way to help you in planning and also in creating small groups if you need them. If you need additional guidance as to why, why we use this slide, the student debrief is intended to invite reflection and active processing of the total lesson. Prepare one or two students to share work from the explorers tasks. Now for me, this has proven really, really hard. So one thing that I have made sure that I do is that with the five summarization slides for the week, I tend to have a list of which students I'm going to call on. That way I get a sense of whether they are mastering the work for this week or not, if I'm able to call on them. Sometimes I'm able to fit in more students, sometimes not. I do have 24 after all, so it does get really hard. We hope that you found this little video useful. We wanted to highlight the purposes of the summary slide because for the most part, a few of us tend to skip them. If we're running out of time, it's like, oh, what can I do away with? We wanted to make sure that this is not one of the things that you do away with because it does serve an additional purpose. Take care, everyone. See you soon.